Good evening, participants. Uh, great to have you with us this evening on the 10th day of August 2020. Uh, this evening, we are having our third session where we are looking at the mediation bill. Uh, today, we have an open session. Uh, we are inviting uh, different uh, uh, mediators who are already practicing to be able to come in, join us, and be able to share their views concerning the Kenya Mediation Bill 2020. Uh, as usual, we shall commence with the national anthem in, Kiswa in English, and uh, we shall be able to recite this as a prayer. O oh God of all creation, Bless this, our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. So thank you very much uh, for being able to join us uh, this evening. Like I said, uh, this evening is an open session so what we shall be doing is just giving opportunity to those of us who are present to be able to share our views uh, concerning the mediation bill 2020. i would like uh, to invite uh, uh, one of the mediators present uh, who would like to share his views uh, rashid are you on hello sarah Good evening. Rashid Mwiza, are you on? Yes, I'm on, Sarah. Good evening. Okay. Can you hear me? Good evening and welcome. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, I'm on the road. I don't know whether I'll be able to give my input comprehensively. Could you kindly allow me to present uh, at a later stage? Okay. Because I'm on the road, I'm on traffic. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, Rashid. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, we have with us also uh, mediator uh, Pauline. We invite you, Pauline, to be able um, to share your response. Uh, uh, Pauline, you can say hi, and uh, what we shall do, perhaps, be before we have your response, is to be able to go through the bill together. Uh, so, Pauline, you're welcome. You can say hello, just because I had called out your name, and then we'll be able to go through the bill together. And uh, okay. begin our comments. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening. Okay, you can hear me, Sarah. You can hear me. Yes, Pauline, we can hear you. Please proceed. Oh, okay, I was suggesting we go through the bill and then we pick our our comments from the bill. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for that. So we shall quickly be able to go through. Uh, the bill in just a little bit. Let me just be able to share that. Okay. So I'll be able to run us through the bill just uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so we have, uh, the bill is on your screen as well, the Mediation Bill 2020, and it has uh, different parts. So we have part one, uh, which uh, looks at uh, what the bill is about. So the title, uh, a short explanation the objective of, uh, of the act and uh, the, how it is to be used, as well as the principles of mediation. We shall then be able to go into part two, uh, which looks at uh, the mediation committee 
which uh, uh, contains the uh, different uh, sections as well. And then part three, the accreditation and registration of mediators. Uh, part four, the mediation process. And uh, uh, part five, uh, uh, recognition and enforcement of settlements. Uh, part six, uh, delegated powers, uh, general provisions in part seven. Okay, so just quickly running through uh, the part one. So we have the title as the Mediation Act and uh, some quick definitions defining who an advocate is, describing the committee and explaining what mediation is explaining what the mediation agreement is, explaining the mediation process, as well as who would be considered a party in the mediation process, uh, looking at who the mediator is, uh, and explaining as well the mediation accreditation uh, committee, uh, the registrar, the report, and the settlement agreement. So that section essentially gives us uh, definitions. Then we go to uh, the next part, which uh, explains the purpose or objective. And uh, the objectives, uh, as, as we can quickly see, is to promote uh, being able to build a relationship, uh, uh, pro promote a conciliatory approach uh, to dispute resolution, as well as uh, improve access uh, to justice. Uh, the next part, it explains where the Act applies, which is uh, to all civil disputes, and uh, the principles of mediation, uh, which are essentially uh, the aspect of voluntariness uh, and uh, the, the need to be informed of rights, confidentiality in the process, uh, being able to be aware of the time issues and being able to run through as fast as is possible, impartiality of the mediator, competence of the mediator, and the fact that uh, the mediator uh, is not to provide legal advice or to use information uh, that they access during the mediation period uh, for personal gain. Then we have the mediation committee, and we have those who are involved. Uh, we have nine members uh, drawn from different uh, institutions, as uh, we can see uh, on the screen. Um, we have representatives uh, from the Law Society, from uh, the Federation of, of uh, Women Lawyers. Uh, we have uh, from DCRI, from the Institute of, of Public Secretaries, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, uh, KOTU, and FKE. Okay. Sorry. Um, Okay, so just explaining how the, the committee will function. Uh, the function, the functioning of the committee. Uh, we have the registrar is the secretary to the mediation committee uh, and an ex official member without a right to vote. Uh, the AG uh, is the one to appoint members uh, of the committee through a gazette notice. Uh, committee members serve for three years, renewable ones, and they serve on part-time basis with allowances paid as uh, determined by the AG and the Salaries and Remuneration Committee. Uh, in addition to that, the AG uh, sets the date of the first meeting of the committee, uh, which should be no later than seven days from the gazettement of uh, the members of the committee. Uh, the committee is the one that shall also
uh, sorry about that. The, the committee shall be able to regulate, uh, develop, and promote mediation as a mechanism for dispute uh, resolution. And uh, the committee is supposed to carry out its functions without prejudice, uh, provide facilities for settlement of disputes, uh, exercise the powers conferred uh, to it uh, by parties to a dispute, but not involved in resolution of the dispute. The committee shall further advise on training of mediators, uh, accredit and register medi mediators, keep a register of mediators, advise the government on policy, guidelines, programs, regulations and uh, legislation concerning mediation. Uh, the committee shall further provide guidelines on fees for mediation processes, be able to conduct research, provide education and issue specialized publications on mediation. Uh, in addition, uh, the committee is to protect and assist members of the public in matters relating to mediation, including uh, being able to provide fair, effective, efficient and transparent procedures for resolution of complaints. Uh, they are to set, maintain and continuously improve standards of learning, professional competent, competence, and conduct for provision of mediation, as well as any other things that may be deemed beneficial for the purpose of mediation. The AG, the Attorney General, shall appoint a registrar and other officers as necessary uh, to enable effective discharge of the functions of the committee. Uh, an appointed registrar or officer uh, shall serve on terms specified upon appointment. The registrar shall be responsible for day-to-day -day management of affairs of the committee, establishment and maintenance of a register uh, in which all records of the committee shall be kept. Uh, the registrar shall further be responsible uh, for accepting, transmitting service and custody of documents in accordance with the rules. Uh, responsible for enforcement of the uh, decisions of the committee, uh, responsible for certifying that orders, directions, or decisions uh, of, of the committee, and making sure that records of proceedings and minutes uh, of the mediation committee and other records uh, of the committee are well kept. They shall also uh, manage and supervise staff of the committee, uh, facilitate access to decisions and records of the committee. Uh, the registrar uh, should, in addition, consider and dispose of procedural or administrative matters as per the rules or direction of the committee. Uh, in terms of conduct of business affairs of the committee, uh, this shall be as provided in the schedule. Uh, and in addition, the committee can regulate its own procedures. Uh, the committee will also establish subcommittees necessary for it to be able to perform and exercise its duties and powers under this particular act. The committee may co-opt into membership of committees established under section one. Other people whose knowledge and experience is necessary uh, for the performance of its functions. Uh, members of the committee shall cease to be members if they are absent from three consecutive meetings of the committee without permission of the chairperson if they cease to be an officer, agent, or member of staff of the nominating authority, if they resign in writing addressed to the Attorney General, if convicted of criminal offenses and sentenced sentence to imprisonment of no less than six months, or as well if they are de declared bankrupt, if they are unable to perform functions uh, due to mental or physical infirmity, 
or upon death. Accreditation of, uh, of mediators and registration of mediators uh, shall be done uh, as follows. A person uh, who wishes to practice as a mediator uh, should apply uh, for registration from the committee. Uh, the committee shall consider the application within 30 days of receipt of the application and register the applicant if uh, they meet the requirements or inform the applicant of the reasons for rejection if they do not meet the requirements. Uh, in addition, a person who wishes to practice as mediator for court annex mediation shall apply to the committee for accreditation. Uh, the committee shall keep a register of all registered and accredited mediators and may also revoke registration or suspend a mediator if the mediator fails to comply with terms and conditions of registration, if the mediator is uh, declared bankrupt or is in breach of conduct and has been found guilty. Uh, the right to appeal against the decision of the committee. Uh, a person may appeal to the High Court within seven days of receipt of the re reason for refusal for either accreditation or registration or revocation or suspension of registration uh, by the committee. Uh, the code of conduct of mediators will be published by the committee uh, and it will be consistent with this act. We are necessary, uh, also consistent with internationally acceptable standards. Uh, further provide for initial uh, and further or continuous training of mediators, uh, cover complaints, disciplinary and grievance procedures concerning mediators and relevant enforcement procedures within professional bodies of which mediators are members. Uh, the mediation process, concerning the mediation process, parties may opt for mediation uh, as of their own initiative, or be referred by a court before which a dispute is pending. And uh, where an agreement uh, makes provision for a mediation clause, a party shall refer a dispute arising from such an agreement to mediation. A party to an agreement which has not made provision for referral of dispute to mediation or dispute uh, covered under this act may uh, under consent or may with consent of the other parties to the agreement or dispute uh, submit the dispute for mediation uh, for the mediation process. The mediation process commences when a dispute is referred to mediation by a court or a party accepts an invitation to submit a dispute to mediation from the other party. Uh, failure by the other party to accept an invitation to mediation within 14 days after receipt of the invitation to mediation shall be uh, considered rejection of the invitation to mediate. Uh, disclosure by a mediator. A mediator appointed to facilitate mediation process shall prior to accepting appointment, disclose circumstances that may affect impartiality, impartiality of the mediator or the conduct of the mediation process. Uh, a mediator shall promptly disclose to parties circumstances arising during the process that may lead to uh, or may affect impartiality of the mediator and as well or or, or conducting of the mediation process. Uh, parties uh, to the mediation process may replace the mediator who makes uh, disclosure uh, concerning the issues just uh, mentioned uh, shortly. Uh, the parties may revoke appointment of the mediator uh, if if uh, the mediator fails to commence the process, 
uh, within a reasonable time and or uh, fails to conduct mediation within the rules of mediation or the mediator no longer possesses relevant qualifications, special knowledge or experience in mediation or the mediator no longer satisfies professional requirements of a professional body in which the mediator is a member. Uh, a mediator appointed to facilitate mediation may resign at any time. A mediator who has resigned or whose appointment has been revoked shall within seven days draw up a report of the progress made in the mediation process and uh, furnish a copy of the report to the parties or the parties and the court where the dispute was referred to mediation by the court. And the parties shall within 14 days from the date of revocation of the appointment of a mediator or resignation of a mediator appoint another mediator. Uh, concerning the mediation agreement, the parties shall enter into a mediation agreement uh, in writing and this should be signed by the parties uh, the, the agreement uh, shall provide for appointment of a mediator, uh, provide for costs of mediation, and contain any other matters as the parties may consider appropriate. The roles of the parties, the parties to a dispute shall take reasonable measures to resolve the dispute through mediation before resorting to judicial proceedings, uh, should cooperate with the other party and the mediator, should participate in good faith in the mediation process, maintain confidentiality as provided for, and if an agreement is reached, ensure that the agreement is written and signed by all parties to the agreement. A party is considered to have taken reasonable measures to resolve a dispute by mediation, by notifying the other party of the issues that are in dispute and offering to settle them. Uh, also by responding appropriately to a notification, as well as providing relevant information and documents to the other party to enable the other party to understand the issues and how the dispute may be resolved. Uh, as well as considering whether the issues could be resolved through the mediation process. And where mediation is agreed, Two, agreeing on a mediator to facilitate the process and attending the mediation process. Appointment of a mediator. Parties are free to appoint a mediator to facilitate the process. They may request for assistance from the committee or any institution to appoint a mediator or mediators on their behalf. And unless the parties agree otherwise, there shall be one mediator. Where there is more than one mediator, the mediators shall act jointly. The role of a mediator is to help the parties in an impartial and independent manner to be able to resolve their dispute. The mediator shall therefore conduct assessment of the parties to the dispute and determine whether mediation is appropriate facilitate communication, understanding, and assist parties identify their needs and interests to enable parties reach a settlement, draw up and authenticate a settlement agreement to be signed by all parties excluded, and conduct mediation processes in a manner that the mediator considers appropriate. In addition, the mediator shall, in conducting the process, take into account the wishes of the parties, uh, receiving requests orally or written statements uh, and the need for a speedy st settlement of the dispute. Regarding attendance and representation in, in mediation, a person who is not party to mediation shall not attend the process unless the parties agree and the mediator consents to a request for such a person to attend the process. A party to the process may be uh, represented by an advocate, an expert, or any other person chosen by the party. A mediator, where necessary, and if the parties agree to the expenses, may obtain expert advice on technical aspects of a dispute. 
A request for services of an expert may be made by a mediator or a party with the consent of the other party. A party shall communicate in writing to the mediator and the other party the name, address, and extent of authority of any representative at least seven days before the representative's participation in the process. Concerning the date, time, and place of mediation, the mediator shall determine this in consultation with the parties, uh, subject to the mediator choosing a convenient place, the parties shall determine the place uh, for the mediation sessions. Uh, in identifying issues in dispute, a party shall submit to the mediator and the other party a statement of issues at least seven days before the first session of the mediation process or within such a time as the parties agree. The mediator may request each party to submit orally or in writing a written or oral statement of the party's position, facts and grounds in support of that position, documents and evidence that party considers appropriate, and a mediator may request the party to, to submit additional information at any stage of the mediation process. Uh, regarding confidentiality of mediation, records, reports, and settlement agreements uh, shall be confidential and not used as evidence or be subject to discovery in any judicial proceedings. A mediator shall not disclose information submitted in the course of the mediation process to a party, uh, to, to someone who is not a party to the mediation process, unless with consent of the parties. Uh, without limiting uh, as well, a party to mediation shall not rely on evidence in court, uh, shall not rely as evidence in court proceedings. Uh, the record of the mediation process, the statement made at the mediation process, information obtained during mediation process, and the parties to the mediation process may expressly waive the confidentiality requirement under subsection one. The confidentiality requirement therefore shall not apply where disclosure is required by law or disclosure is necessary to protect a child or vulnerable person or is necessary to report or lessen a serious or imminent threat to life, health or property of a person or is necessary to report the commission or prevent the likely commission of an offense. is necessary for the purpose of implementation and enforcement of the settlement agreement, or necessary to prove or disprove a claim or complaint concerning negligence or misconduct of a mediator based on conduct ensuing during the mediation process. Uh, the evidence uh, submitted or relied upon in the process is admissible is admissible or subject to discovery in proceedings after the mediation shall not be inadmissible or subject to confidentiality solely because it was submitted or relied upon in the mediation process. Concerning the settlement agreement, a mediator may formulate terms of a possible settlement if it appears to the mediator that there exist issues to a dispute to which the parties are agreeable and submit them to the parties for adoption and, and signing. The mediator shall, if parties reach an agreement on a settlement or dispute, draw up a settlement agreement, setting out the terms of the agreement. A settlement agreement upon execution by the parties to the dispute shall be binding on the parties and persons claiming under them respectively. A mediator shall authenticate a settlement agreement and furnish a copy of the settlement agreement to each of the parties or each of the parties and the court where the dispute was referred to mediation by the court. End of mediation process. Uh, this is arrived at when parties execute a settlement agreement. The mediator, after consultation with the parties, makes a declaration that further mediation is not feasible. The parties jointly address the declaration to the mediator that the mediation process is terminated. 
or a party makes a declaration to the mediator that the other party and the other party that the mediation process is terminated. At the end of the process, where a settlement agreement is reached, the mediator shall furnish a copy of the settlement agreement and a report to the parties or to the party and the court where the dispute was referred to mediation by the court. Where the process is terminated, furnish a copy of a report to the parties or to the parties and the courts where the dispute was referred to mediation by the court. The role of the mediator in other proceedings. A mediator shall not, unless the consent of the parties or as required by law, act as an arbitrator or a representative or an advocate of a party in any judicial proceeding in respect of a, dis of a dispute facilitated by the mediator and be presented by a party as a witness in any judicial proceedings arising out of or in connection with the mediation process facilitated by the mediation. Exclusion of liability. A mediator shall not be a party in any judicial proceeding relating to mediation under this act in which the mediator facilitated. A mediator is not liable for any act or omission in the discharge of the functions of a mediator, unless the mediator is proven to have acted fraudulently, negligently, or in bad faith. Part five, referral of a dispute to mediation, recognition and enforcement of a settlement agreement. The duty of an advocate uh, to advise uh, on mediation, an advocate is required uh, to advise a party to consider mediation and a party shall file with the court a mediation certificate at the commencement of judicial proceedings stating that mediation has been considered. A party entering appearance shall file with the court a mediation certificate at the time that the party enters appearance or acknowledges the claim stating that mediation has been considered. An advocate shall file with the court a mediation certificate at the time of instituting judicial proceedings, stating that the advocate has adv advised a party to consider mediation. The court, a court may take into account the fact that a party has considered or participated in mediation when making orders as to costs, case management, or such other orders as the, course, as, as the court may determine. Referral of disputes to mediation by the court. A court uh, before which a dispute is filed or pending may refer the dispute to mediation at any time before the final judgment is made if the dispute is with respect to a mediation agreement. The court is of the view that mediation shall facilitate the resolution of the dispute or part of the dispute. A party to the dispute with the consent of the other party apply to the court to have the whole or part of the dispute referred to mediation. A court shall not refer a dispute to mediation if there is no dispute between the parties. There is no dispute between the parties with regard to the matter agreed to be referred to mediation or covered under this act or if the mediation agreement is inoperative, incapable of being performed or void, or if previous mediation attempts were made and failed, or if substantial public interests involving constitutional, environmental, or occupational health and safety issues are involved, if costs are, dis are likely to be dispor disproportionately high, if there is a likelihood of delay, if a binding judicial precedent is required, or if a party is likely to be prejudiced as a result of power imbalances. A court shall specify the time within which a report shall be filed with a court. With regards to judicial proceedings, a party may apply to the High Court or the court that referred the dispute to mediation for an interim measure of protection to challenge the jurisdiction of the mediation process, to challenge the appointment or impartiality, impartiality of the mediator, to challenge referral of the dispute to mediation, 
or to challenge the settlement agreement if obtained fraudulently or unlawfully. The decision of a court in respect of a matter under this section shall be final and not subject to appeal. Uh, concerning stay of proceedings, a referral to mediation under section 35 of this act shall serve as a stay of proceedings. A court before which proceedings are brought in a dispute, a court before which proceedings are brought in a dispute which is the subject of a mediation agreement or pending before mediation process may, if a party applies so, no later than the time when the party enters appearance or acknowledges the claim against which the stay of proceedings is sought, stay the proceedings and refer the matter to mediation. The proceedings before the court shall not be continued after an application and the subsection two has been made and the matter remains undetermined. If the court declines to stay judicial proceedings, any provision of the mediation agreement to the effect that a settlement agreement is a condition pre precedent to the bringing of judicial proceedings in respect of any dispute is of no effect in relation to, the, to those proceedings. Concerning recognition and enforcement of settlement agreements, where a referral to mediation leads to settlement of a dispute or part of a dispute, the settlement shall be drawn up and filed in court, recorded by the court as a judgment of the court and enforced by the court as its judgment. Where the referral does not lead to a settlement, the court shall continue with the proceedings from the point where the referral was made to mediation. A settlement agreement shall be recognized as binding and upon application in writing to the High Court, the court that referred the matter to mediation shall be enforced, shall be en enforced subject to section 39. Unless the High Court or court referring the dispute to mediation orders otherwise, a party relying on a settlement agreement or applying for its enforcement shall furnish the original settlement agreement and a duly certified copy of it and the original report and a duly certified copy of it. The recognition of enforcement, the recognition or enforcement of a settlement agreement may be refused if at the request of the party against whom it is invoked, that party furnishes the High Court or court referring the dispute to mediation proof that a party to the mediation process was under incapacitated, the settlement agreement is not valid under the law to which the parties have subjected it, or failing any indication of that law under the law of the state where the settlement agreement was made. The settlement agreement deals with a dispute not contemplated by or not falling within the terms of reference to mediation, or it contains decisions and issues beyond the scope of the reference to mediation, provided that if the decisions on issues referred to mediation can be separated from those not so referred, that part of the settlement agreement which contains decisions on issues referred to mediation may be recognized and enforced. The appointment of the mediator or the mediation process was not in accordance with the mediation, agreement or this act or the law of the country where the mediation took place. The settlement agreement has not yet become binding on the parties or has not yet been set aside or suspended by a court of the state in which or under the law of which that settlement agreement was made or the making of the settlement agreement was induced or affected by fraud, bribery, corruption, or undue influence. If the High Court or the Court finds that the subject matter of the dispute is not capable of settlement by mediation under the law of Kenya, or the recognition or enforcement of the settlement agreement would be contrary to public policy of Kenya. Part six, powers of the Attorney General to make rules and regulations. 
Attorney General may make rules of practice and procedure and regulations generally for the better carrying into effect of any provisions of this Act without prejudice to the generality of subsection 1. The Attorney General may make rules and regulations that provide for submission and referral of a dispute to mediation, appointment of a mediator, conduct of mediation process, the forms to be used for submission or referral of a dispute to mediation, filing of a mediation agreement or any matter to be filed, the requirements and the process of application for accreditation or registration of mediators and related activities, training including continuous training for mediators, grounds for and the procedure relating to suspension or expulsion of a mediator, professional conduct and etiquette of members, any fee which may be charged for anything done under this Act, and any other matters as may be necessary for the promotion of the objects of this Act and the regulation of mediation. For the purpose of Article 946 of the Constitution, the purpose and objective of the delegation under this section is to enable the AG to make rules and regulations to provide for the better carrying into effect the provisions of this Act. The authority of the Attorney in general to make rules and regulations under this Act shall be limited to bringing into effect the provisions of this Act and fulfillment of the objectives specified under this section. The principles and standards applicable to the rules and regulations made under this section are those set out in the Interpretation and General Provisions Act and the Statutory Instruments Act. Part 7, General Provisions. When the subject matter of mediation involves a dispute to which any limitation period under the Limitations of Actions Act applies, the parties to the mediation process may agree in writing to suspend the running of the limitation period from the date of the commencement of the mediation process to the end of the mediation process. Unless the parties agree otherwise, the parties shall equally pay mediation expenses, including the fees and expenses of the mediator, any administrative assistance received, experts called, any expenses incurred in connection with the mediation process and the settlement agreement. The mediation expenses shall be on the basis of a written agreement entered into the parties, entered into between the parties and the mediator at the commencement of the mediation process. The mediation expenses shall be reasonable and proportional to the complexity and value of the issue or issues at stake and to the amount of work carried out by the mediator. A mediator who facilitates mediation without being accredited or registered by the committee as required under Section 13, who is in breach of the prescribed code of conduct, who fails to make disclosures contrary to Section 19, who acts in an impartial manner in resolving disputes contrary to Section 24, who discloses information submitted in the course of the mediation process to a person who is not a party to the mediation process without the consent of parties, commits an offence and shall be liable to conviction of a fine not exceeding two million shillings or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or both. Consequential amendments. Section two of the Civil Procedure Act is amended by deleting the definition of the terms mediation and mediation rules. Section 59A of the Civil Procedure Act is amended by deleting subsection 4 and substituting, therefore, the following new subsection. The function of the Mediation Accreditation Committee, committee shall be to oversee the conduct of the court annexed mediation processes. Section 81.2 of the Civil Procedure Act is amended by deleting paragraph FF. Section 5 of the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration Act 2013 is amended by deleting the words and petition processes appearing in paragraph D and substituting therefore the word process. By deleting the words mediators and appearing in paragraph M. Any rules of practice and procedure for mediation processes issued before the commencement of this act shall as long as they are not inconsistent with this act remain in force until repealed or revoked by, the, by subsidiary legislation and the provisions of this act and shall for all intents and purposes be deemed to have been made under this act. Uh, 
um, conduct of business and affairs of the committee, the meetings. The committee shall meet at least once every month to conduct its business. The first meeting of the committee shall be convened by the Attorney General, and the committee shall meet subsequently at such a time as it shall determine. At the first meeting of the committee, the members of the committee shall elect the chairperson and vice chairperson of the committee. Despite the provisions of, of subparagraph one, the chairperson shall, upon a written request signed by at least five members of the committee, convene a special meeting of the committee at any time where it is considered expedient for the transaction of the business of the committee. A meeting of the committee shall be presided over by the chairperson in the absence of the chairperson, the vice chairperson, and in the absence of both the vice and the chair by a member elected by the members of the committee present. A committee may invite any person to attend any of its meetings and to participate in its deliberations, but such a person shall not have a vote in any decision of the committee. The proceedings of the committee shall not be invalidated by reason of a vacancy within its membership. Subject to subparagraph two, the quorum of a meeting of a committee shall not be less than half of the members. Where there is a vacancy in the committee, the quorum of the meeting shall not be less than shall not be less than three members, unless a unanimous decision is reached, a decision on any matter before the committee shall be made by a simple majority of the votes of the members present. And the voting, in the case of an equality of votes, the chairperson of person presiding over the meeting shall have a casting vote. A member of the committee who has a direct or indirect personal interest in any matter being considered or to be considered by the committee shall upon the relevant facts concerning the matter, having come to his or her knowledge, disclose the nature of his interest to the committee. A disclosure of interest made by a member of the committee under subparagraph one shall be recorded in the minutes of the meeting of the committee, and the member shall not, unless the committee otherwise determines, be present during the deliberation on the matter by the committee or take part in the decision of the committee on the matter. A member of the committee who makes a disclosure under subsection one shall not be present in the meeting of the committee held to determine whether or not the member shall take part in the deliberations or decision of the committee in relation to the matter or influence any other member of the committee in arriving at a particular decision in relation to the matter. A member of the committee who contravenes subparagraph one commits an offense and shall be liable to convic conviction uh, to a fine not exceeding 500,000 shillings. Subject to the provisions of this schedule, the committee may determine its own procedure and the procedure for any committee established under section 11. The committee shall cause the minutes of all proceedings of its meetings to be recorded and kept, and the minutes of each meeting shall be confirmed by the committee at the next meeting of the committee and signed by the, pass by the chairperson or person presiding at the meeting. Memorandum of objects and reason. The principle of this bill is to provide for the settlement of all civil disputes by mediation, set out the principles applicable to mediation, provide for the establishment of the mediation committee, and provide for the accreditation or registration of mediators and recognition and enforcement of settlement agreements, among other things. As one of the bill contains preliminary provisions, which include the short title interpretation clause, the objects and purpose of the bill, the application clause, and the principles of mediation. But two of the bill provides for the establishment of the mediation committee, the functions of the committee, the appointment of the registrar and staff, the functions of the registrar, the, the conduct of business and affairs of the mediation committee, establishment of subcommittees, and grounds upon which a member of the mediation committee shall cease to be a member. But three of the bill contains provisions on accreditation and registration of, mediations, of mediators, spells out the grounds for revocation of registration as a mediator, the right to appeal against the decision of the mediation committee, and the conduct of mediators. But four of the bill contains provisions relating to the mediation process and provides for the use of mediation to resolve disputes, the commencement of the mediation process, the revocation of the, of the appointment of a mediator, a mediation agreement, the role of the parties in the mediation process, the appointment of a mediator, and the role of a mediator, among other things. 
Part 5 of the bill contains provisions on referral of a GSP to mediation, recognition and enforcement of settlement agreement, and in particular, provides for the duty of an advocate to advise parties to consider mediation, provides for the referral of disputes in court to mediation, provides for recourse to judicial proceedings, stay of proceedings, and spells out the ground for refusal of recognition or enforcement of a settlement agreement. But six of the bill contains provisions and delegated powers by providing that the Attorney General may make rules of practice and procedure and regulations generally for the better carrying into effect of any provisions of the Act. But seven of the bill contains general provisions which include provisions on mediation expenses and on sus suspension of a running of limitation period from the date of commencement of the mediation process. Statement on the delegation and legislative powers and limitation of fundamental rights and freedoms. The bill delegates legislative powers to the Attorney General to make rules of practice and procedure and regulations generally for the better carrying into effect of any provisions of this Act, but it does not limit fundamental rights and freedoms. Statement on whether the bill concerns county governments. The bill does not concern county governments in terms of Article 110 of the Constitution. Statement as, as to whether the bill is a money bill within the meaning of Article 114 of the Constitution. The enactment of this bill shall not occasion additional expenditure, shall not occasion additional expenditure of public funds. Dated on the 24th of May 2020 by Adam Dwale, the leader of the majority. Section 59A of uh, Cap 21, which the bill proposes to amend, Section 59A, establishment of a mediation accreditation committee, there shall be a mediation, mediation accreditation committee which shall be appointed by the Chief Justice. The mediation accreditation, accreditation committee shall consist of the chairman of the rules committee, one member nominated by the Attorney General, two members nominated by the Law Society of Kenya, and eight other members nominated by the following bodies respectively. The bodies of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, Kenya Branch, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, the International Commission of Jurists, Kenya Chapter, the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, the Institute of Certified Public Secretaries, the Kenya Bankers Association, the Federation of Kenyan Employers, the Central Organization of Trade Unions. The Chief Justice shall designate a suitable person to be the med mediation registrar who shall be responsible for the administration of the affairs of the committee under this act. The functions of the Mediation Accreditation Committee shall be to determine the, the criteria for the certification of mediators, propose rules for the certification of mediators, maintain a register of qualified mediators, enforce such code of ethics for mediators as may be prescribed, and set up an appropriate training program for mediators. Act number 12 of 2012, the section 81 of CAP 21, which the bill proposes to amend. The rules committee. There shall be a rules committee which shall consist of the following members appointed by the Chief Justice. One judge of the Court of, of Appeal, one judge of the High Court, a judge of the Environment and Land Court, one judge of the Employment and Labor Relations Court, who is a member of the Employment and Labor Relations Court Rules Committee, two magistrates, one of whom shall be the secretary to the committee, eight advocates nominated by the Law Society of Kenya to represent each of the branches of the society, established under Section 24 of the Law Society Act 2014, and one representative from the Kenya Law Reform Commission and the Attorney General or a designated representative. A person shall be qualified to be nominated to the committee by the Law Society of Kenya if that person has been a member in good standing of the Law Society of Kenya for at least 10 years and holds a current practicing certificate at the time of his or her nomination. A person nominated by the Law Society of Kenya under subsection 1 may be nominated more than once to serve on the committee. The Chief Justice may elect to be a member of the committee, in which case he or she shall be the chairperson, but where he elects, not to be a member, the Chief Justice shall appoint one of the members to be the chairperson. 
The committee may co-opt other persons whose knowledge and experience may assist the committee in the discharge of its functions. The function of the committee shall be to propose rules not inconsistent with this act or any other written law or provide for any matters relating to the procedure before courts and tri tribunals and advise the Chief Justice on such rules as may be necessary under this section. In particular, and without prejudice, the generality of the powers conferred by subsection one, such rules may provide for all or any of the following matters, namely, the service of summonses, notices, and other processes by post or in any other manner, either generally or in any specified areas and the proof of such service, the maintenance and custody while under attachment of livestock or other movable property, the fees payable for such maintenance and custody, the sale of such livestock and property, and the proceeds of such sales, procedure in suits uh, by way of counterclaim and evaluation of such suits for the purposes of jurisdiction, procedure in garnishing and changing orders either in addition to or in substitution for the attachment and sale of debt, procedure where the defendant claims to be entitled to a contribution or indemnity over against any person, whether a party to the suit or not. Summary procedure in suits in which the plaintiff seeks only to recover a debt or liquidated de demand in money payable by the defendant with or without interest arising from a contract expressed or implied or an enactment with the sum sought to be recovered as a fixed sum of money or in the nature of debt other than a penalty or on guarantee where the claim against the principal is in respect of a debt or liquidated demand only or on a trust or in suits for the recovery of immovable property with or without a claim for rent or men's profits by a landlord against the tenant whose term has expired or has been duly determined for non-payment of rent or against persons claiming under such tenant. The selection of mediators and the hearing of matters refer to mediation under this act. Procedure of a way of originating summons, a consolidation of suits, uh, appeals and other proceedings. Delegation to any registrar or other official of the court or any judicial, quasi-judicial or non-judicial duties and all forms, the registers, books, entries and accounts which may be necessary or desirable for the transaction of the business of civil courts. The Chief Justice may, in consultation with the Rules Committee, issue practice notes or directions or resolve procedural difficulties arising under this Act in order to facilitate the attainment of the overriding objective of this act as specified in section 1a. Section 5 of number 26 of 2013 of the bill proposes to amend functions of the center. The functions of the center shall be to promote, facilitate and encourage the conduct of international commercial arbitration in accordance with this act, administer domestic and international arbitrations, as well as alternative resolution techniques under its auspicious, ensure that arbitration is reserved as the dispute resolution process of choice. Develop rules encompassing conciliation and mediation processes, organize international conferences, seminars, and training programs for arbitrators and scholars, coordinate and facilitate in collaboration with other lead agencies and non-state actors, the formulation of national policies, laws and plans of actions and alternative dispute resolution, and facilitate the implementation, enforcement, continuous review, monitoring, and evaluation. Maintain proactive cooperation with, us, with other regional and international institutions in areas relevant to achieving the center's objectives. In collaboration with other public and private agencies, facilitate conduct, promote and coordinate research and dissemination of findings and data on arbitration and serve as a, reposit as a repository of such data. Establish a comprehensive library specializing in arbitration and alternative dispute resolution. Provide ad hoc arbitration by facilitating the parties with necessary technical and administrative assistance at the behest of the parties. Provide ad advice and assistance for enforcement and translation of arbitral awards. Provide procedural and technical advice to disputants. Provide training and accreditation for mediators and arbitrators, educate, educate the public on arbitration as well as other alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, 
enter into strategic agreements with other regional and international bodies for purposes of securing technical assistance to enable the center to achieve its objectives, provide facilities for hearing, transcription, and other technological services, hold, manage, and apply the fund in accordance with the provisions of this act, perform such other functions as may be conferred on it by this act or any other written law. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the Mediation Bill 2020. And I invite uh, Wangari to be able to provide some comments. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Sarah, thank you for uh, uh, this time that we have been able to share together with you. And uh, I am really glad that uh, we have been able to, I am very glad that we have been able to have this read through of the Kenya Mediation Bill uh, 2020. This being the third session, the policy response team, uh, so it fits, that uh, we have a session whereby we would uh, be able to read through the Kenya Mediation Bill uh, 2020. One, to allow persons who may not have the capacity or the ability to read the document, which is uh, written in English. And also at the same time, we have uh, different uh, ways that we are able to assimilate information so the intention is that we are able to provide that support by reading through together. And uh, so the policy response team, so it fit that um, our, our session three with regard to the uh, Kenya Mediation Bill to be a, a read through. So I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Mediator uh, Sarah, for um, uh, supporting us uh, in, in, in that context. And um, at the same time uh, today, we will we will have uh, comments from two of uh, the of the colleagues. Uh, that is a, a, rabbi, a young mediator, Rashid Ali Wiza, and also we will have a brief a, a brief comment from uh, uh, mediator Susan Mendot, who has also who has shared uh, in previous sessions with regard to uh, the uh, uh, the comments on the on the Kenya uh, mediation bill. We are hosting these sessions, um, taking into consideration that uh, the National uh, the Assembly uh, released the mediation uh, bill um, that was in uh, the month of June. And uh, the clerk of the National Assembly made a call for public participation where the uh, written memoranda is uh, supposed to be submitted to the clerk of the National Assembly uh, on or by the 11th of August, uh, 2020. And so this is uh, our second last uh, uh, session in discussion of uh, this uh, particular uh, topic as it is um, at present. So I wish to thank our earlier speakers in the uh, in previous sessions who have enabled us to be able to digest and uh, be able to really just uh, explore what uh, the current uh, bill stands for and um, uh, what uh, it may mean for the practice what it may mean for the beneficiaries and the users of the services, and also what it generally means um, for us um, as a nation. So as Wasiliana Hub, the context by which we look at the, um, the country or Kenya having a mediation bill, uh, the context we look at it is enriching lives and specifically being able to enrich um, Wanji, uh, Wanjiko, who is uh, the Kenyan, and uh, every citizen in this uh, particular country. So that is the uh, backdrop of the Wasilian Hub uh, policy response team uh, engagements, which we have created as open sessions. So as to allow any player and also persons who have interest in the, in the ecosystem to be able to come in and uh, grow their insights, grow in their knowledge, so that if they are going to make individual responses to the memoranda call by the clerk of the National Assembly, or they will do it as part of groups or as part of an institution, then they are free to engage and also to be able to adopt any of the discussions um, that have been uh, made here. 
So while the current reference document is the Kenya Mediation Bill 2020, we have hosted the sessions as a series on the Model Mediation Act, um, not specifically focused on the Kenya Mediation Bill 2020, which is a 34-page document, which we encouraged mediators uh, to be able to read. And today we have had a read through so that if we have probably any mediator or any person who is in the ecosystem or any citizen in the country who is not able to read the document, then they can be able to listen in and, uh, they are, and, and follow the, the abridged uh, this, uh, run through that we have been able to have today. So the earlier sessions that we, 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 we held uh, have now lead us to a section whereby we should actually be discussing in terms of, or the, the, to you, uh, it would actually be what are your recommendations and best practices that would enable mediation practice to mature, to develop, and to significantly contribute to the day-to-day -day social, economic, political, and religious spheres. In other words, as we said, to enrich lives. Uh, this is also part of the series of uh, the ADR Tomorrow for Africa, which is to reimagine, to rewire, and to retool, specifically in the three Ps of positioning, policy, and practice, uh, of mediation so as to transform the dispute um, ecosystem. We know that when we uh, use the word ADR, yes, it could represent appropriate, alternative, or alternate dispute um, resolution. So as the Wasiliana Hub uh, community, we are delighted that we have had the opportunity to host uh, three uh, virtual sessions, which are available on YouTube to allow anyone to be able to listen into views of uh, different persons. We have had uh, training organizations speak to us. We have invited academia to speak to us. We have invited practitioners to speak to us. We have also invited counsel to speak to us. And at the same time, we have also used experiences of users, at, uh, or including also taking a user-centric approach uh, to uh, policy development and having a discussion on what that would mean. So we really, we have given a good roundup that allows any person who uh, would like to be able to uh, issue, to put a memoranda, uh, a written memoranda to the clerk of the National Assembly, we have given you a good uh, opportunity to engage with persons and also even yourself probably to challenge some of the thoughts um, and insights that you have. We view, uh, as so Wasiliana Hub, that um, uh, mediation is a nascent profession right now uh, in the country and any uh, any policy or any laws that are designed should actually be promoting and should as much as possible cause this work to grow. Uh, and as the work grows, then the market can actually be the one to design and define who it wants to work with and who it will not work with. Market forces are very powerful and we view that a market uh, uh, approach would actually allow the work to blossom and to, uh, to bloom and also at the same time, a practitioner-led um, approach. So in this uh, next part, uh, as uh, we uh, have, after we have had the, the read, we will uh, firstly invite uh, young mediator uh, Rashid Mwiza, uh, mediator uh, Rashid Mwiza, you will kindly, uh, you will kindly uh, give us your very specific uh, remarks and, uh, uh, of, and, and comments or views uh, we've had the opportunity with you also in um, uh, earlier sessions so that we can uh, be able to hear your views as uh, we are wrapping the these engagements that have been organized by the policy, uh, the response team. And then we will come to mediator uh, Susan Mendot uh, right, uh, right after you. So uh, kindly, Rashid Mbuiza, welcome. Thank you, Ms. Wangari, for this opportunity. You're welcome. Uh, uh, how was your day today, Rashid? I'm glad it was a good day. Glad to hear. And, uh, mm -hmm. To be available for the session. I was afraid I might miss it. Okay, Wonder good. wonderful. We are delighted that you're here with us now. Yes, kindly you may go into your, your, your remarks uh, for this particular session. Thank you. Rashid? Thank you, Angari. Now, my perspective is the bill is, uh, is a step towards the right direction for mediation and for the general public in conflict resolution. Uh, however, I find that uh, the loopholes that we have identified in various uh, platforms that we have discussed about the bill, they need to be noted in memoranda. Uh, and these memoranda, as you say, 
can decide to choose whether it is uh, you can present them individually or as an organization or as groups. And uh, that was one thing I wanted to say about the memorandum. Uh, then one thing about us as mediators is we should look deep in ourselves so as to know why we want to, to be conflict resolution experts in the first place. Because in as much as mediation is a profession that can reward you financially and improve your life or rather the quality of your life as a, as a member of the society, again, you have a responsibility to the higher deities on how you, you live with other human beings. So in as much as we, we look at the mediation bill in a, in a context that uh, aims at safeguarding our, the, the, the in, our interests, we should also see an opportunity to add that uh, spiritual aspect Okay, the DCRI, in my view, was was uh, was not a very uh, welcomed organization, or rather, a stakeholder in the discussions. And uh, I think the only way that could have been neutralized is if there were other organizations that were also faith based with uh, for uh, in other faiths. But because some other faiths are not included, and because the, the purpose of DCRI has not been clear, then we have been able to raise eyebrows on the issues of, uh, I can say, uh, the legitimacy of, of the drafters. What were they trying to achieve? So maybe the DCRI have a, a genuine purpose, but because it is not an inclusive organization, then those left out uh, feel they are not in a position where they will uh, be able to benefit equally as a stakeholder. Another thing is, I think it, is a, it was a very good uh, opportunity to understand the mediation bill uh, through the various discussions that we've had. I've been able to understand it in-depthly. I've analyzed the, present, the, the article by Professor Tomo Gender, and also looked at the comments made by Rupert. If you can recall, one day he sent a, a document that was highlighting his, his opinion on the, on the article by, Dr., by Professor Tomo Gender on the, on, the, on, on the loopholes of the mediation bill. So it was a very, a, a very, good eye-opener for me. I, I managed to understand what is the real, um, the real picture in, when it comes to, to the mediation platforms that we are trying to create in Kenya. What will be the loopholes and how will we be able to cover those loopholes? How then do we become the, uh, the, the, the intended people for this act how do we maximize on, the, on this opportunity to make sure that mediation is rewarding to us? It remains a challenge uh, whether the comments that we've made or those who have already submitted their memoranda, whether those memorandas will be considered, it remains a question. And also, this, can be, this is an opportunity for those who are not very conversant to the legal legislative process to get to understand how a bill is structured up to when it becomes law. For at the moment, we are at the committee stage. We are, at the, we are actually at the first, after the first reading where we have been allowed to discuss. And after the first reading, we, the bill has been subjected to, to various discussions before it goes back for second reading. And uh, after the second reading, it will be uh, to be taken to the committee again. Whether now or now the committee will work on the recommendations and whatever provisions that we have laid out. And then it will, uh, uh, those recommendations will be taken back to parliament for the third reading. 
where all the amendments and the various recommendations will be tabled again and then once approved then it will be ready for assenting by the president then after the bill is assented there will be a commencement which will make it uh, will bring it uh, will bring the legal effect in the law through a legal notice another observation that i i feel is is important to note is that the attorney the role of the attorney general in the bill has brought a lot of controversy there is no clear a clear reason why why of all sectors in the government that is that are in charge of the legal or rather in the justice system they had to see the 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 availability of the attorney general in the bill as very important and disregarded the the existing structures in the judiciary to the court next mediation and the difficult to understand i don't know whether in our, in, our, in our, if we were to do a memo a, a joint memo then i would raise such a question or oh, the role of the ag is not clear because as we know the ag is the legal advisor for the government and therefore cannot cannot be in the office of uh, of a mediator or in the mediation uh, departments because he will be partisan and also one other thing i noted is that the referral of disputes to mediation should con should continue to be voluntary uh, despite the court mandated uh, mediations that we have at the moment through the court next uh, procedures uh, i think there is need to to create awareness through through the bill uh, and uh, Uh, through other medias that mediation is supposed to be voluntary at some level where the court mandates it that this must be, be be resolved by mediation in my view is that usually it's because the parties did not were not aware of this alternative dispute resolution mechanism that existed so they rushed to court that is why the court will then mandate them to do mediation but once these people are aware that actually mediation is is something that they can explore before exploring the court process then they are likely to choose to mediate first uh, with those few remarks those few comments i'll say back to you on gary and sara i'm really grateful for the opportunity thank you Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, uh young editor Rashid Mbiza for your uh remarks and uh your summary. Yeah, uh, well, one of the very good things that uh, we have been able to have an opportunity for is that with every session that we have uh, hosted uh as we have invited persons who are either experts uh in uh, who are experts in uh, different fields and also uh persons who have views uh their different views as we have been able just to share them uh very um openly it has and it has enabled each of us to have a greater understanding of the mediation bill itself and also at the same time to be able to explore well, how else could this be or is this uh, the really in 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 all in in the, in, in each part of it uh, the the right uh, the right direction or are there some elements that we could actually be able to uh, make contribution to and uh, support uh, our country to have uh, a, a better growth or good growth of uh, the mediation uh, practice um along with this juncture to invite uh, mediator susan wendot mediator susan wendot uh, to uh, also be able to share with us uh, uh, her, her, her views on uh, on this in the on the on this discussion so i wish to remind us that uh, the kenya mediation bill 2020 which is uh, the national assembly B assembly bill number 17 of 2020 uh, it cites that it's an act of parliament to provide for the settlement of all civil disputes by mediation to set out the principles applicable to mediation to provide for the establishment of the mediation committee 
to provide for the accreditation and registration of mediators, recognition and enforcement of settlement agreements, and for connected purposes. Mediator Susan Wendot, kindly your views. Thank you very much. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and Good thank you, Angari, Sarah, and Rashid. Good evening, uh, Mediator Susan Mendot. I hope your day was uh, was a good day, and uh, we are grateful that you're here. Yes, you're sorry, I, 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 Please proceed. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you. My day was good, but uh, I came late. I was doing the errand, but yes, we please all proceed. The same I... Thank you. Yeah. Now, for me, I, I will look at it in like three ways. One, my observation is uh, this bill was rushed. It was not given a lot of thought because if you read through, there are so many loopholes which need to be filled. Uh, I look at it like the establishment of the mediation committee. I'm still asking myself, what is the why FIDA and not another organization? If I look at like COTU and FKE, those are normally uh, organizations that have uh, handled disputes coming from employees. So when they are in the committee, how will they address the, the, the conflict of interest? Because each one of them is interested with their people. So I, I, I look at the composition, that one needs to be reviewed. And then there was something on the, um, on the charges, I mean, the, the penalty, when, when a mediator um, breaches the, 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 the rules, I find it to be too punitive. Then the, um, the information itself, some were lifted, I don't know, from other places. Because you look at it, there's uh, NCIA, there's a code annex uh, medi uh, um, the, the body of the code annex. So my improve. I wish we can put up all the, the, the memoranda together and then submit it to the clerk of the National Assembly so that they bring back this bill to the, to the, to the interested parties. Because if you look at even composition of committees, private mediators are not there. They are not mentioned anywhere. Then if you look at even the process of the settlement, the referral of the cases from court to mediators, I find the, the, the bill to be addressing the court annex uh, mediators, not any other mediator. So I wish it can be brought back, then involve all the stakeholders, all the who are in the mediation field, including even the training institutions that train mediators, so that everybody's views are put together, then presented as one paper. Otherwise, the other alternative is for us to maybe front for a body like Mediation Council of Kenya, so that we have a body that is taking care of um, all mediators, including private mediators. That's, that's what I, 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 I see in this bill. Because if you look at even the fee that a, a, a mediator is supposed to charge. It's not me. It's just an open, open-ended. And yet, if you look at bodies like uh, LSK, the KMA, there is a guideline on the fee that is uh, chargeable or payable by clients. So those, I still look at the the bill to be having loopholes, which maybe needs to be addressed. So I'm 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 hoping that all the parties that have uh, brought up the memoranda have uh, maybe asked for more time for the stakeholders to be involved so that we are part and parcel of this uh, bill. Because as it is, it's like something that was done and dropped, I mean, without involving all the stakeholders. So that's what I see, and I'm praying they'll still give more time for it to be reviewed. So those are my views, those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, uh, thank you once again, uh, Mediator Susan Mendot, for um, your remarks and your views, uh, uh, also as uh, part of the policy uh, uh, res res response uh, team, and also uh, as uh, one of the sector leads for uh, our critical sectors of uh, uh, labor and also um, on uh, family wealth uh, mediation. So those are views. The opportunity that Vasilian Hub provides at all times is that uh, uh, practitioners and also uh, persons who are within the ecosystem are able to have a platform to be able to give their views, their insights in uh, on different uh, topical areas. And uh, we have been in this series on the Model Mediation Act, this being a practitioner response and open discussion, which is uh, our discussion number three. And uh, in as much as uh, the, 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 the core areas uh, of today was uh, a read through of the Kenya uh, Mediation Build uh, 2020, we also uh, uh, have been building uh, uh, insights that enable us to be able to uh, develop or add value to what can be a model mediation act. So colleagues, with, with that, I wish to thank you. And I also would like to thank the policy response team who um, have uh, uh, been collating the, uh, and are collating the views to be able to put together um, a, a, a response. And specifically, a response that is coming from the context of the philosophical view uh, with regard to uh, what is the experience uh, with regard with when, when going through this bill some of some of those remarks have been given by the colleagues um, um, here we encourage you and we know that mediators are part of other net of, of other networks and you're also part of other communities and also as individuals please put together your insights and share them uh, to the clerk of the National Assembly for purposes of uh, discussion by the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee uh, of the National Assembly. It provides uh, value. And because the commitment is that we are able to enrich lives through this uh, uh, vocation, which is um, the mediation vocation. Uh, mediator Susan uh, Wendot uh, and Mediator Rashid Buiza, uh, young Mediator Rashid Buiza, thank you for uh, uh, giving your insights uh, today in this uh, in the open this in this today's open discussion. Uh, I would like to give back the session to uh, Mediator Sarah Atter so that she can uh, take us through the closing uh, of the uh, national anthem. Mediator uh, Sarah Atter. So mediators, uh, the draft uh, of the uh, response uh, will be shared with colleagues and we uh, at all times are excited when we are also able to see that colleagues are, have views which they, uh, they, they, they also have put together uh, in, other, in other forums. So please feel free. We have shared a lot of discussions in our various sessions. They are all uploaded on YouTube please feel free to go through them. Any views that have been shared, which you share in, or a group that you're in, that are shares in them, please feel free to adopt them as part of um, your memoranda response. Uh, Mediator Sarah uh, Atter, welcome back, and uh, thank you for uh, this time. God bless you all. Um, thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate uh, all the input uh, that we have been able to have uh, through the sessions, as Mankari mentioned, and uh, the session this uh, particular evening. And uh, it is just about time for us to close. And uh, we will close with the national anthem in case Swahili, as uh, we normally do. We will say it as our prayer in case Swahili, and then we will be able to close. E mungu govuyetu. Ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na mjuku, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Thank you very much everybody and a lovely evening to you all. You too, have a lovely evening everyone. You too. Goodbye. Bye.